Tammy Terrell is arguably Motown's most forgotten female star. Terrell's beautiful, soulful voice touched each and every one of our souls. Everything was cut short only 10 years into the music industry. Terrell, she endured a great deal of trauma throughout her whole life, and I'm going to tell you a story about it today. Before we get started, let's leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Thomasina Montgomery was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on April 29, 1945. Her mother, Jeannie Montgomery, was a failed actress, but her father, Thomas Montgomery, was a barber who owned a popular barbershop and he was also a local politician. Her parents was expecting a boy, which explains why she was named after her father. But growing up, everyone called her Tommy until she had saw the film Tammy and the Bachelor at the age of 12 which she started going by the name Tammy. Tammy's sister claimed when she was 11 years old, she was raped by three boys. And after this, she would begin suffering from migraines. Megami, she graduated from Germantown High School in 1962. And here, this same school was attended by future stars like Frankie Beverly, The Showstoppers, and Bill Cosby, to name a few. Luther Dixon, a songwriter and producer, had discovered Montgomery when she was 15 years old. With her being discovered, Dixon would lead the way and land her a deal with Wine Records. Now, while on the label, she would release her first ever single titled, If You See Bill. If you see Bill. Tammy also recorded demos for the band, The Shirley's. During this time, she would meet James Brown, and she decided to record one more single before she had left the label. Tammy, she was signed with Brown's label, Charmy Records, and she was seen background for his review tour in 1961. Tammy, she had founded the group The Sherry, but she would leave the group a year later after multiple disputes. Tammy, she would record her first single for Brown's label titled I Cry in April of 1963. I cry. Now Tammy, she would have a romantic relationship with James Brown when she was 17 years old and he was 29. This relationship started in 1962. Tammy, she would leave Brown's label for good in 1963 after he beat her so badly that she was covered in blood and bruises. She would sign the Checker Records and release the single, If I Will Marry You, which was a commercial flop. Tammy, she decided to finish her education and enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania where she was studying to become a doctor. Tammy, she would receive an opportunity that she couldn't pass up while in school and she was given the opportunity to go on tour with Jerry Butler. Now, while on this tour, she would meet Motown owner Barry Gordy. And when Gordy heard Tammy sing, man, like many others, he fell in love. In 1965, Gordy, he would sign Tammy and rename her Tammy Terrell with an I to capitalize on her sex appeal. In 1966, her first two singles on Motown were I Can't Believe You Love Me and Come On and See Me. She would also record two more singles with future stars, including All I Do Is Think About You by Stevie Wonder and This Old Heart of Mine by the Isley Brothers. During the Motortown Review Tour, Terrell, she would open up for The Temptations, and here, she would begin a romantic relationship with Temptation member David Ruffin. Their relationship was rocky and abusive. Ruffin, he would propose to Terrell, but she would only discover that he was already married and had three kids. Ruffin, he was very abusive to Terrell, and I believe at this time Terrell and Marvin Gaye was working with each other, I believe he was jealous of their friendship. Ruffin would allegedly hit Terrell in the head with his motorcycle helmet 
causing the couple to split up in 1967. Early in 1967, Motown will pair Marvin Gaye up with Tammy Terrell and the duo will go on to release seven consecutive singles including Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Your Precious Love, If I Could Build My Whole World Around You, If This World Was Mine, Ain't Nothing Like The Real Thing, You Are All I Need To Get By, and Keep On Loving Me Honey. In 1967, her first Motown album was released titled United. This album was released with Marvin Gaye as a duo and this album had peaked at number 69 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and number 7 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. The duo's second album, You Are I Need, was released in 1968 and had peaked at number 60 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and number 4 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. In 1969, Terrell's debut solo album for Motown was released titled Irresistible. This album peaked at number 39 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts and that same year, another album was released titled Easy. This album peaked at 184 on the Billboard Top 200 charts. Terrell and Gay, they would receive a Grammy nomination in 1968 for their song Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Now Terrell, she would collapse in Gay's arms on stage on October 14, 1967 while performing Your Precious Love. She was later diagnosed with a tumor on the right side of her brain. Terrell, she would undergo surgery on January 13, 1968 and she would return to Hitsville right after her surgery to record her part on the song, You Are All I Need To Get By. By 1969, her condition had deteriorated to the point where she had to stop performing live. When her first solo album with Motown was released, she was already very ill and couldn't promote it. So, it's the reason why the album didn't sell because of the lack of promotion. Terrell was wheelchair bound by 1970 and she had went blind in one eye, also losing her hair. She was hospitalized after her eighth brain surgery and she was down to 93 pounds. Now Terrell became engaged to Dr. Ernest Garrett who worked as a doctor at that same hospital she was admitted to. Terrell went into a coma on January 21st, 1970 and was sadly passed away on March 16th, 1970, just one month shy from her 25th birthday. Now, according to Garrett, Terrell's mother had banned everyone from Motown from attending her funeral except for Marvin Gaye because she believed their friendship was really genuine. Tammy seemed to spend her whole life looking for love. At a very young age, she experienced endless trauma from being sexually abused at the age of 11 to her relationships with james brown and david ruffin she just faced endless trauma terrell had a voice that could woo you with her harmonies that was so wholesome that when you heard her sing you knew she was singing to your soul <laughs> 